Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another Slimline card as promised. I told you guys I'd be doing more of these and couldn't resist doing one with this new set. This is the main squeeze stamp set from My Favorite Things. This was part of their May 2020 release. I was so excited when I saw it. I was like, oh, lemons, just the color, yellow, happy, fun, love. So I used all the images in the stamp set and I'm stamping them onto Distress watercolor paper, just stamping them onto the smooth side with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And I am not clear heat embossing them. <laughs> Slowly like breaking my habit of that. So since I had everything lined up, I stamped two panels also because I wanted a bunch of these images. Since I'm doing a slim line card, I need lots of images to fill this card. And then once they are stamped, I'm doing insanely easy watercoloring. I'm using my go-to two favorite palettes here. These are the, I have the Prima Classics, which is like your basic colors. And then I am using a couple of the colors from the um, Prima Pastel Dreams. And I'll have links to everything, like I always do with the supplies. So for the watercoloring, I'm just picking up the color, slapping it on. I'm using a size six. Yeah, size six. Uh, Royal and Langnickel Zen watercolor brush. I am not making, you know, I'm not bringing the color right to the lines. I don't worry if I go over the lines a little bit. It's all good. The way these are drawn and just everything, I just was in the mood to kind of keep it messy, keep it easy, not overthink it. So started with the lemons, all the yellow, did one layer first, and then um, fiddled around and mixed a little bit and kind of used some of the color that was already on the palettes to add a second layer, you know, just give it that little bit of depth. Again, not worrying about it too much, not keeping it perfect, just getting the color on and then kind of moving it around a bit after I'd cleaned um, the brush off. So I did that with all of the lemons. You can see I just slap on the color and then go back and kind of move it around just to, you know, remove the like really harsh lines, but not worrying about it too, too much. And then after I get the lemons painted, I'm going to take a tiny little bit of brown to paint the little stems that are on just three of those lemons. So at this point I've switched to a size four brush, which is just a bit smaller, just to kind of get into those little areas. So painted the stems and then the green, I just mixed yellow and green together, slapped that on all of the leaves. And then I went in with just more of like a green green and kind of added that in, just to give it that little bit extra. So same thing, slapped it onto all the leaves. And then I just went back after I kind of wiped the brush off and it's mostly just water on it just to kind of blend it a little bit. And that's it. Simple, really simple. So just cute and fun and easy. So I made sure everything was completely dry before I go on to the next step because I don't want to um, smear anything, etc. So made it sure everything was completely dry. And then I want to add splatter, of course. So I'm using just white paint. This is Picket Fence White Paint by Distress, like Ranger. And I put everything in my splat box this time so I don't get, you know, splatter everywhere. And then I just put a bit of the paint onto an acrylic block. And then I'm just using a paintbrush that's just wet with clean water. Swirling that a little bit. I don't really need to thin this down. The Distress paint is very liquidy. If you're using just basic acrylic paint, you might need to water it down a bit. That's also why I like the Distress paint though is because it's so liquidy, it's nice for splatter and you don't need to water it down because more often than not, when you start watering them down, of course you're diluting them. They're not as vibrant, etc. So did some splatter. I wasn't too crazy with the splatter, but just add that little bit of white splatter. Again, let made sure everything was completely dry so I don't get white paint all over the place. And then after everything was dry, I'm just gonna tape the coordinating dynamics die set into place. I'm just using little bits of purple tape because at, when I was making this, my little roll of washi tape had disappeared. And then I, I found it under a pile of things on my desk <laughs> after this card was done. So I just used my purple tape, just ripped that up, die cut everything. And then for my card base, I have a full eight and a half by 11 sheet of heavyweight white cardstock. So I cut that at seven inches and then I'll get to the card base a little bit later. The remaining piece of cardstock from this sheet, I cut down to about three and a quarter by eight and a quarter roughly. I wanted it a little bit smaller than what the card front will be. So I have that here 
and I wanted to do a little bit of ink blending to give it some color. So I ended up pulling out my tumbled glass distress ink. I did pull out broken china, but I don't end up using it. I just stick with the tumbled glass. And then I have one of my little Studio Caudia blending brushes here, and I'm just very lightly blending. Took my time, I've super sped this up <laughs> in editing. I took my time, it still only took like less than five minutes. Just do a nice light blend on this. I just, I wanted the color kind of concentrated in the middle and then just fade out to white all over the edges. So just a nice light blend. I wasn't too worried though about it being perfect because all these images are gonna go on top of it. But once I was done blending, I wanted to add more splatter. <laughs> So for the splatter for this, I ended up pulling out my uh, Tumble Glass Distress Oxide Spray. I haven't used these in a while and I just, I've had them in the back of my mind. I was like, I need to pull these out more because I love my Distress Oxide sprays. So I shook it side to side to really mix up everything because the pigment settles in these bottles. And then I just put some on an acrylic block. I've done a bunch of videos showing how I usually will just use the nozzle, like the tube of the spray bottle. And I'll do splatter with that, but that adds huge, like big, if you want big splotchy splatter, um, that's the way to go. But this, I wanted a finer splatter. So I just picked it up and like, again with a paintbrush and tapped it with my finger. And then off camera, I had arranged all these lemons so you can see what I'm going for here. And then I just took a picture with my phone. I've also done videos where I've used like press and seal, all that sort of thing, which is great. But I just took a picture with my phone to kind of remind me how I had everything laid out. And then I put this panel in my Misty. And of course, again, the splatters dry everything. Put this in my Misty, figured out where the center was. I just used one of my Misty creative corners, the like L-shaped ruler to kind of position the exact center of this. And then I lined up the thank you stamp from the main squeeze set and then got that on the door of my Misty. And then I inked it up with that same VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink and then stamped that onto the panel. So once that was stamped, I also wanted to add my still oldie but goody favorite. This is my favorite things, black and white stripes pattern paper that I do have extras of, but I'm still, I think, working on the same first pack. I save every scrap from this and I've used them so many times. So I grabbed a scrap of it and I just trimmed off two pieces that were roughly like three quarters inch. I made sure to get them to the same width because again, it's a slimline card, so it is eight and a half inches long. The pattern paper is only six inches long. So to make this work, I am going to line this up and piece this together, basically like wall wallpaper. So I made sure it was gonna work, which it did. So I'm just lining up using my grid line to make sure I've got it in a straight line because when you're looking at black and white stripes, it's funny how it just kind of makes everything look kind of wonky. So lined it all up, figured out how this was gonna, you know, where it was gonna line up with the stripes and then just adhered it together with some craft tacky glue. And now I have one big long piece of pattern paper and you can barely see the seam and it'll be irrelevant anyway because I'm gonna cover it up with some of the little um, leaves that I have watercolored. So got that adhered together. So I'm going to adhere this strip to my card front panel here. And same thing, just using my grid mat to kind of line everything up to make sure I get this adhered straight. So I'm gonna adhere this with the craft tacky glue, flip it over, trim off the excess with my scissors. And then once this is trimmed off, I'm gonna save that last little piece. I wasn't, I was gonna put it back with the package, you know, save it for the next project, but then I decided I'm gonna save it. I'm actually gonna use it on the inside of the card in a bit. So got that adhered. So now I'm just gonna start adhering all my lemons and leaves. I have my phone off to the side. So I'm referencing the picture I had taken with everything arranged. So I just keep going, kind of work my way from outside to the middle with all of these lemons. And I'm just adhering them with the craft tacky glue. I did think about like popping things up with foam tape, but decided not to, just decided to just adhere everything down. I only add adhesive more to the center of everything. So bits and pieces of it do pop up a bit anyway. So it gives it that little extra bit of dimension, but without any foam tape. So I just kept adhering everything in this almost the same way I had it before I stamped the sentiment. And then, you know, kind of tucking in some of the leaves here and there just to make sure one, I covered the seam, even though you can't really see it regardless. And then also just to kind of finish it all off. So I had set aside that little pile there in the lower left. That's what I had planned to have on the inside of the card just to finish it off. So hence me stamping and coloring 
double what the set had so that I have enough for everything. And then while I have the card front here, I was like, oh, I'm gonna add some gems. So I have the Peridot, Peridot, Peridot. I forgot again. <laughs> I always Google it before I, before I film the videos when I use these and then I, I forgot to. I'm running out of time and it's super late. So anyway, I use those ones. I'll have them linked. I forget every single time I forget how to pronounce it. So those ones and some yellow ones. Uh, the yellow ones I used are no longer available. So I'll link to some similar ones. But anyway, I sprinkled those crystals all over the card front and then adhered them into place with the craft hacky glue. And then my card base was what I cut earlier. So it's eight and a half by seven. So I score it at three and a half. So this will be a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. So I scored it with my bone folder and my um, like my Teflon bone folder and my little score buddy. And then that little piece of black and white striped paper that I had left over, I trimmed the one end at an angle and then I'm just gonna adhere that to the inside of the card. And then I kind of fiddled back and forth with how I was going to adhere these remaining uh, little lemon pieces. So once I was happy with that, I'm going to adhere those to the inside of the card with the craft tacky glue. Just kind of tucking everything in here and then once I've got the little greenery adhered that's it for the inside I'm not gonna add a sentiment the outside says thank you then the inside I have the whole space to write whatever I need to write so got those adhered and then for the outside of the card I ended up cutting down a piece of black cardstock to the same size as the card so three and a half by eight and a half and I'm going to adhere that to the card front and that just kind of gives a nice border to these images and then I'll adhere the card front and then as a last thing, I, of course, I made a custom envelope again. If you didn't see my last video, I showed step-by-step -step how to um, assemble and adhere this envelope. This one, I did the side flap open instead. I mentioned that in the last video that I thought this would work and it will. So I made an envelope with some yellow pattern paper that just happened to be rainbow on the other side, which is just kind of unexpected and fun. And that goes with the card. And this card is now complete. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, I'll have picture links to everything if you wanna check it out. Um, I'll also have that all in the description box below the video. So you can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.